I love South Africa. It's really pretty much my passion. And I am a photographer, so maybe I'm not always eloquent in the way I speak, and I might stumble at times. And the fact that I'm speaking to an audience that there's Sowetans here, and I am speaking about Soweto, is also intimidating. But let's go. The first person, so the work that I'm going to show you is my work that I did on Soweto. It was shot in two, uh, 2009 and 2010. The first woman I met was Sibongele Mazabuko from Josie FM 105.8, and she said to me, Soweto is like Hollywood to me. Everything is here. There is no longer a need to go to the other side of town. Wow, that was the beginning. And then, uh, in 2009, I was sitting in a park with my friend, who's French and he's a writer, and he said he had been going to all the bookstores looking for a contemporary book on Soweto, and he couldn't find one. He said, with the World Cup coming up, why wouldn't I do one? So I thought, OK, that's not a bad idea. Another thing, and I'm speaking about my process here, more than about the individual um, pictures. Throughout my photographic career, I started at the Star newspaper. Basically, whenever there was a free moment and we could go anywhere to take pictures, I used to say to the picture editor, can I please go to the Star newspaper? I mean, can I please go to Soweto? And one day, I remember in the late afternoon light, some grannies came out and they said to me, what are you still doing here? And I said, what do you mean? And they said, well, the Tsotsis are going to come out, which are criminals, because the sun's going down. And then they said to me, and what country are you from? I then fast forward to 2009, and here I've got this daunting task to create this project on Soweto. You know that there are over a million people living here in 32 different areas, so that it's, it's vast. And how was I conceptually going to speak about it? Now, I have quite a thing. I come from the media, but I believe that in context to Africa or South Africa, I really believe that we often are given a raw deal. And basically, Africa and South Africa, we speak about war, famine, poverty, HIV, AIDS. And I wanted to create this book that was going to speak about what I believe Sowetans, how they would see Soweto. And so once I had conceptualized all of this, I drove for, it was 7,000 kilometers over a three-month period, and I worked with four different uh, photographers, not at the same time, but by the end of the week, they were exhausted. And everything, as you can see, I'm quite an emotional person. I, I suppose everything was only built by instinct. So I would drive along, see someone that I thought was gorgeous, and stop the car, get out, and ask if I could photograph. And if you know Sowetans, they love photography. <laughs> so it was pretty easy, and compared to the suburbs, it was even easier, because where I come from, everyone is behind high walls. In Soweto, everyone is out and about. Um, and then I sort of broke it down into portraits, into landscapes. Actually, the hardest place to photograph was the swimming pool. To get permission to photograph at the 10 swimming pools in Soweto was next to impossible. Um, so th this is actually a sign, an HIV AIDS sign in someone's garden. And I wanted to take you away from what you already know. This is the Backpackers Lodge um, in Soweto. I found it quite bizarre that they've already like memorialized uh, Nelson Mandela. Just take a look at a few more of the pictures. I thought this was beautiful. It's a portrait studio in Soweto. And then, I, I, in a way, I thought about the different kinds of people I would like to photograph. I photographed mixed couples. I photographed the old and the new generation the Sangoma, and I promised myself never again to have a reading. 
because I did, and she said to me that basically what was going to happen was that I was going to have a car accident, and I still had another like 5,000 kilometers to go. <laughs> and at the same time in the shacks, how people speak about that and the pride and the dignity that you find in people's home. It doesn't matter if you're rich and poor, or poor. And I thought this was classic. We have two famous football teams, Orlando Pirates and Kaiser Chiefs. And both houses were on different sides, uh, just around the corner from each other. Yeah, and then this woman was great. This is actually in Villa Kazi Street. And she was trying to educate people in the neighborhood about snakes. And of course, I was introduced to bling and fashion. And maybe I did learn to dance in Soweto. But no, actually, I know how to dance. <laughs> and then subtly, I wanted to bring in the things that are important. For example, alcohol. But I didn't want to force it in your face. And then, obviously, the different characters that existed. And this really amazing guy. This man, I just pulled over. I nearly destroyed my car. He told me he was the best dressed man in Soweto. <laughs> and photographing weddings was difficult. Because every time I wanted to photograph, it was um, during the peak sunlight. And then another extraordinary thing is that you have subcultures, which are bikers. Um, I even ate a vegetarian bunny chow. And a bunny chow basically is it's half a loaf of bread. You cut it out and usually have meat. But the vegetarians in Soweto have vegetables, and then they sprinkle um, cheese on it. Um, in closing, um, my work is not the full truth. It's part of the truth. And I really just hope that I can shift people who don't really know Soweto into another kind of atmosphere, and that you can think of it more in terms of home and with pride and dignity. And the last picture, which is coming up now now, will speak very much about it. It's in the old age home that's actually around the corner. Thank you. Thank you, Kelly. That was great.